welcome to all of you. I am delighted to have the opportunity to present this topic to uh, a wide group of people from all sorts of locations. This is a topic I normally present in a setting where we are all in the same room and people can see each other and I can see them and they can see me. And it works well in that kind of setting because it's a topic that lends itself very well to discussion, dialogue, debate, uh, and uh, sharing and comparing. But uh, the fact that you're not all in the same place right now is really both an opportunity uh, and, and something that I'm looking forward to. I know that some of you are listening in group settings right now with your teammates or your departments, and I know that others of you are at your own computers. Whichever way you are attending right now, I'm going to be giving you ideas for how you can facilitate exactly this type of a discussion among your teammates, coworkers, colleagues, and so on. Uh, so the uh, topic, uh, there we go. Okay, so the objectives for today are as follows. Uh, I want to help you broaden your understanding of extroversion and introversion. Uh, wherever you start from, I'm hoping to add a little bit to your knowledge base on the subject. Number two, to describe how introverts and extroverts perceive each other, and that is both the positive perceptions and the negative perceptions. I think we can all learn from both. Uh, the positive perceptions tell us how others see us that in, in a positive light, and we can continue to do those things. By learning the negative perceptions, we then have choices to continue or not to continue the, the behaviors that are triggering those negative perceptions. A third, I will explain and offer some ideas for what extroverts and introverts can do to accommodate, respect, and work well with each other, which is really what we're talking about here. This is what it's all about. And fourth, as I already referred to, I will be suggesting some things that you can do uh, to facilitate an increased understanding of this whole issue of introversion and extroversion in your team or organization. Now, I should mention at this point that I am an introvert. And I mention that partly because one of the greatest misconceptions about introversions is that we introverts cannot get up in front of an audience and speak. And that is decidedly not true. Uh, in fact, it might very well be the case that uh, sometimes introverts have some advantages in pre preparing and presenting to groups. Uh, I mention this also because I, as an introvert, I have great empathy for my fellow introverts. I know what a challenge it can be to be an introvert in an extroverted world and to have to um, get along with our fellow extroverts. I also, however, have great empathy for extroverts because I have learned from my fellow, uh, my friends and colleagues who are extroverts that extroverts too face challenges at times, sometimes brought on by their very extroversion. And I can only imagine the challenges that we introverts pose for extroverts because we are a very mystifying and confusing bunch. So I have great uh, empathy for both uh, personality types. Uh, I'm going to be presenting a whole bunch of stuff over the next hour or so, and I've created a hidden page on my website to uh, not only give you the kinds of information I'm presenting, but to give it in text form so that I can provide a great deal of additional information. So later on, you don't need to look at it now, but later on if you care to, here is a link that you can use, and I'll provide it again at the end. You'll see the grid that I'll be presenting, uh, charts on tendencies and preferences of introverts and extroverts in the workplace. Uh, I'll talk about brain research, but this will give you more detail, suggested reading, uh, as well as links to get discounts on my several e-books, and also a link that my wonderful publisher, Dorset House, has provided so that you can get discounts on my books, Managing Expectations, and communication gaps and how to close them. Now, a place to start is just thinking about which are you. And if you're in a group setting right now with your teammates or colleagues, you might want to raise your hand as I go through each of these uh, to get a fix uh, on how the group sees itself. First of all, are you definitely an extrovert? Are you definitely an introvert? And most people have an intuitive sense of which they are. Uh, it's just something that people tend to know about themselves, even if they're not quite as sure about other aspects of their personalities. Or I'm each at different times, and you can be definitely one or the other and still feel you are each at different times. Type theory 
which is a theory about personality types that goes back many decades. Uh, according to type theory, you are one or the other. You are an extrovert or you are an introvert. Now, I am not in this talk going to defend uh, or speak to type theory uh, because there are cases to be made for and against it, but simply to acknowledge that whichever you are and whatever type theory says, people do often behave as one at one time as the other at the other time. You may be very extroverted at work because your work calls upon you to be extroverted and yet be much more introverted at home or have an extroverted life at home and more introverted at work and so you're some of each at different times. Or your response might be, I'm not sure. And some people come into this sort of presentation unsure which they are with a clearer idea by the end. A couple of other possible uh, responses. I don't know, but I'd like to know, and I hope if you're in that category, you will know a little bit more by the end. I don't know, and I don't care. Well, that is sort of an amusing kind of response, but some people respond that way because they don't care about themselves. What the real interest is uh, is how to get along with others. Whether I am an introvert or I am an extrovert, how do I get along in the workplace or in life in general with those who are more introverted or more extroverted than I am? And finally, I know, but I don't want others to know, and I usually tell those people, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll figure you out. Uh, now, in talking about the subject, I want to be explicit about some of the terminology that I will be using. It is a great mistake if you should hear anybody ever say, well, all extroverts do this, or introverts would never do that, or uh, introverts always, or extroverts never, because this is not a subject of absolutes. In fact, there can be as many, uh, there can be differences between any two introverts or any two extroverts that are almost as big as the differences between any introvert and any extrovert. And so in talking about the subject, I try to use language like introverts tend to, or extroverts generally, or introverts prefer to, or extroverts often, and I refer to communication styles to acknowledge that anything that I say may be true for you or may not be true for you. It varies because there's so many other factors that influence your personality. Second item here, I... Uh, in trying to be impartial, I will talk sometimes about extroverts and introverts, and at other times I may swap and talk about introverts and extroverts, and I try to do that my material as well. Uh, I try very hard not to favor one over the other. Uh, MBTI, I know many of you are familiar with it, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. That is one of the first ways that many people get some formal insight into introversion and extroversion, and it's not a prerequisite to this uh, presentation. For those of you who haven't had access to it, it is a personality instrument that uh, has a whole bunch of multiple choice questions, and out of it comes insight into your personality along several dimensions, um, including introversion and extroversion, and it helps you understand yourself and the ways you are similar to and different from others. And I may not even mention MBTI again, but just wanted to acknowledge that as a source of, of wisdom for, for many people. And finally, spelling. Uh, in type theory, extrovert and extroversion are spelled with an A. Uh, a lot of people, however, in writing about it, use, use it with the O, the more popular use, extroversion. And in a lot of my early writing, I did as well, because I thought if I write it with an A, people will think it's a typo, and so I'll write it with an O. More recently, however, I've decided that since I am talking about learnings that come out of type theory, I should use the proper spelling, which is with an A. And so I am in this presentation, but if you go back to some of my earlier writing and some of the references that that, that website will 